In this lecture, we will talk about monoclonal antibodies production. Monoclonal antibodies belong to a class of highly specific antibodies that are produced by the clone of a single hybrid cell. Actually, monoclonal antibodies produced by fusing a B cell that secretes the desired antibody with tumor cells that are called myeloma cells, and myeloma cells are capable of unlimited growth. And then we fuse beta cells and myeloma cells and they become hybridoma. Monoclonal antibodies all have identical antigen binding site and they bind to the same epitope with same affinity and having same antibody class. Now we see how we can produce monoclonal antibodies. First, what we do, we immunize the mice with foreign antigen and then after few weeks of immunization, we isolate spleen cell from spleen cell, we isolated beta cell and take myeloma cells. Myeloma cells are the fusion partner and then we fuse these two cells by the help of polyethylene glycol and they become hybridoma and then we select them under head medium what is head medium and how we do selection in head medium we will discuss it in next slide and then after selection we screen the specific cells producing antibodies and then we do expansion and then we harvest monoclonal antibodies now let's see these steps one by one the first step is immunization of mice and selection of mouse donor for the generation of hybridoma cell. First, mice are immunized with an antigen. Antigen that is prepared for injection either by emulsifying the antigen with adjuvant or other adjuvant or by homogenizing a slice that contain the antigen. Intact cell and whole organism and microorganism also sometimes used as immunogen. In almost all laboratories, mice are used to produce the desired antibody. In general, mice are immunized every two to three weeks, but the immunization protocol vary among investigators. So when a sufficient antibody titer is achieved in serum, from immunized mice, we remove spleen and use as a source of cells for fusion with myeloma cells. And the next step is screening of mice for antibody production. After several weeks of immunization, blood samples are obtained from mice for the measurement of serum antibodies. Several techniques have been developed for the collection of small volume of blood sample from mice. Serum antibody titer is determined with various techniques such as enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay and flow cytometry. If the titer is too low, then mice can be boosted until an adequate response is achieved as determined by repeated blood sampling and when the antibody titer is high enough, then mice are commonly boosted by injecting antigen without adjuvant two weeks after the previous immunization. From mice, we remove spleen for in vitro hybridoma cell production. And the third step is preparation of myeloma cell. Fusion antibody producing spleen cells, which have a limited lifespan, with cells that are derived from an immortal tumor of lymphocyte that are called myeloma result in a hybridoma that is capable of unlimited growth and then myeloma cells are immortalized curl cells that are cultured with it as a guanine to ensure their sensitivity to the hypoxanthine, aminopatrine, thymidine or head selection medium and use after cell fusion, a week before cell fusion, myeloma cells are grown in it as a guanine and cells must have high viability and rapid growth. 
and the hemp medium only allow the few cells to survive in culture. And the fourth step is fusion of myeloma cells with spleen cells. Here, single spleen from the immunized mice are fused with the previously prepared myeloma cells. And here we use polyethylene glycol, a substance that causes the cell membrane to fuse. As noted in previous step 3, only few cells will grow in the special head medium. And the cells are then distributed to the 96 well plate or the ELISA plate containing feeder cells as a growth medium. So feeder cells are believed to supply growth factors that promote growth of hybridoma cells. And the fifth and final step is cloning of hybridoma cell line by limiting dilution or expansion and stabilization of clone by a size production. At this step, small cluster of hybridoma cells from the 96 well plate can be grown in tissue culture followed by a selection for antigen binding or grown by the mouse a site method with cloning at a later time. So cloning by limited dilution at this time ensures that a majority of wells contain a single clone and considerable judgment is also necessary at this step to select hybridoma that are capable of expansion versus total loss of cell fusion product due to under population or inadequate in vitro growth at high dilution. So optimizing the mouse at size expansion method at this stage can save the cell. Also it is the experience of many that a brief period of growth by the mouse at size method produces cell line that at later in vitro and in vivo stages show enhanced hardiness and optimal antibody production. Here we see what are the head trick. Actually, myeloma cells have been genetically engineered such that they cannot use hypoxanthine and aminopatrine and thymidine head medium as a source for the nucleic acid biosynthesis and will die in culture because they lack SGPRT enzyme and supreme cells have limited lifespan. Only B cells that have fused with the engineered myeloma cell will survive in culture and grown in hat medium. Here is the summary of monoclonal antibodies production. Like first is immunization of mice with the antigen and then preparation of myeloma cell and fusion of myeloma cells with beta cells that are removed from spleen of mice and then clone screening and picking and then functional characterization. Here we confirm, validate and characterize by doing ELISA, each potentially high producing colony will be identified here and then we scale up clone that produce desired antibodies and mean of selection agent. And finally we do expansion, here we expand clone that produce our desired antibody. So it's all about production of monoclonal antibodies.